Now, on the 19th of June 2020, Boris Johnson attended several gatherings. He was sung happy birthday. He was given a cake. No, not by the advisers in the cabinet room, but first by the pupils and teachers of Bovingdon School in Hertfordshire. To journalists and official photographers, Boris held a cake aloft, one that he'd been given by delighted teachers as he made his visit to the school. Happy birthday was sung to him by a gathering of school children. Fun was had by all and shortly afterwards, the photographs were released by number 10 to political journalists. This party, as the word party apparently is now how we're describing every brief sing-song of happy birthday these days, no, this party has not landed the teachers or the pupils of Bovingdon School with a Covid fine. And rightly so. Everyone can see that that would be patently absurd. No one thought cake-giving and sing-song was against the rules. Just as an event a couple of hours later in the cabinet room was not thought to be against the rules either. Indeed, the story of this sing-song of happy birthday and cabinet room cake was briefed to the press at the time, published that night by the Times newspaper. No one minded. Not the Downing Street advisers who briefed it out, not the seasoned political journalists who wrote it up, and not the British public who read the story in their newspapers the next day. Yet two years later, through the distorted lens of Partygate, suddenly this once innocuous event has been judged to be rule-breaking, in a way that I know has privately surprised many political journalists themselves, though sadly relatively few would say so in public. Clearly the Chancellor was shocked at his fine too. He had no idea he'd done anything wrong. Interpretations of the rules up until last week did not suggest that such an event would come anywhere close to breaching the rules. Police forces, lawyers and the public at large did not treat the rules as unforgiving as that. Until now, that is. We've rewritten history and reimagined the rules to be more draconian than they actually were. If the rules had been interpreted as the Met Police have belatedly interpreted them, just about every person in the country would have been slapped with a fine. Not least of all, the Metropolitan Police themselves, who gathered on Westminster Bridge, led by Commissioner Cressida Dick herself, to applaud the NHS at the height of lockdown at the end of April 2020. Yet they did not refer themselves for fixed penalty notices. Of course they didn't. If they had, then ordinary members of the public the country over would have been handed penalties. But to remind everyone, they were not. The bar was high. The pupils and teachers of Bovingdon School did not get fined. Nor did the heroic nurse Lynn Gilmore, who in May 2020 marked her 70th birthday with the team of district nurses in the town of Flint with presents and a small party. The good-natured event with cake and smiles was reported in the local press at the time. Lead district nurse Wendy Mousley reportedly uh, and proudly told the local paper that during this lockdown period, Lynn is aware that she should be self-isolating due to her age, but refuses to do this. She agreed reluctantly to remain office-based as she loves to be in contact with her patients, but wants to be with her team. And good for her. I hope she had a wonderful birthday party with her colleagues, as essential workers did up and down the country. And I hope how everyone can see that no one thought these people should have been fined at the time. How no one interpreted the rules that draconianly for anyone, anywhere across the country. The rules were generously interpreted, even for senior politicians. Sir Keir Starmer's beer with work colleagues was ruled by local police to not be rule-breaking. No, this was described as a a work meeting. A work meeting with alcohol. And, And fair enough. Yet why on earth, then, did Boris receive a fine for having a cake, let alone Rishi Sunak? Where is the consistency? The rules have, in the case of the Prime Minister, been interpreted in their most extreme, draconian form, in a way which they were interpreted for no other individual in the country, not even for other senior politicians. Which now brings us to the case of Nicola Sturgeon. The First Minister of Scotland was pictured breaching her own rules over the weekend, not wearing a mask despite enforcing others to do so. A minor breach of the rules? As minor, perhaps, as daring to have a birthday cake. Surely, if we're to have any consistency in how rules are now being retrospectively enforced, however, surely the First Minister of Scotland must now be fined too. Or if she isn't, 
Surely the Prime Minister and the Chancellor's absurd cabinet room fines should be refunded too. Else it really is one rule for Boris and another rule for everyone else, just not in the way that we've been told.